is Steve Isham. I'm a retired teacher. I <coughs> retired uh, January 2017 after 42 years teaching in Arizona schools. I've taught everything from kindergarten to people getting a master's degree at the university. Uh, uh, part of my understanding of teaching is that you want to connect with your audience. Well, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a judge. I haven't been before many judges except a speaking ticket or two. So, so I thought I looked this up so you could, I could kind of connect with you attorneys and judges. My ancestor, Edward Swift Isham, started the largest law firm in Chicago in 1859. The firm admitted Robert Todd Lincoln, the surviving son of Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, as a junior partner after the Civil War. So I give this a little connection. <laughs> My surname is, comes from our family crest, uh, I show. I shame not, so you get the name Aisha. I'm here today to show you information you should consider before sentencing a child to the foster care system in Arizona. In the former foster children population, there are 24% who experience homelessness after aging out of the system. That's one out of every four. In the former foster children population, there are 61% who are unemployed one year after aging out. In the general population of people that are 25 years of age or older, there are 31% of you that have a bachelor's degree. In the former foster children population that are age 25 and older, there's only 3%. So only three out of every hundred have a bachelor's degree. In the former foster children population incarcerated since age 17, there's 64% is male, 32% is female. A Casey family study showed adults who had been in foster care were twice as likely to be depressed, 22 times more likely to experience homelessness, and three times more likely to live at or under the poverty level than the general population. And the same Casey study also found fostered adults had post-traumatic stress disorder at a rate of twice of what Iraqi war veterans have. Uh, the children in foster care and those who age out are four times more likely to attempt suicide, even as young as seven years old, 12 times more likely to receive psychotropic medications. African-American children represent 4.8% of the population in Arizona, yet they represent 13.9% in out-of-home care. Children with an adoption case plan spend an average of two years in out-of-home care. Today I speak to you, there are over 260 foster kids missing. You place these children in foster care. Where are they? Was there an Amber Alert for a single one of them? Is there a special law enforcement unit investigating their disappearance? 31% of runaways end up being sex trafficked that means more than 65 foster kids were sex trafficked after you placed them in foster care. Every day, hundreds of thousands of grandparents, aunts and uncles, older siblings, and non-related extended family members step in to keep children safe and nurtured when the kid parents cannot. Child Welfare League of America defines kinship care as the full-time protecting and nurturing of children by grandparents, aunts, uncles, godparents, older siblings, non-related extended family members, and anyone to whom children and parents ascribe a family relationship. Why does the Arizona Department of Child Safety all but ignore kinship care? Taking their identity, their heritage, their beliefs, their religion, and their name and social security numbers away in the name of best interest of the child does not seem reasonably to be in the best interest of the child. The Child Welfare League of America has successfully focused on this solution for more than 35 years, and yet Arizona ignores one of the most positive, healthy, and successful methods for keeping children safe. Arizona takes more children percentage-wise than California, Texas, and New York combined. Ladies and gentlemen, when you sentence a child to the foster care system in Arizona, you have sentenced them to most of the most of them to a life sentence of failure and hopelessness. For more than 40 years, I have watched the Arizona Child Protective Services, and it is no better now than it was when I started teaching in 1975. Mr. Ashton, I have to ask you to bring your remarks to some close. Yes, sir. Just
I have one sentence left. Okay. Uh, they can change the name of CPS, but they can't change the truth. You individuals in this room are the ones who can make a difference. I've been doing this since 1975. No governor has been able to do this. No legislature has been able to do this. The only ones that I can see after 43 years is the people that are in this room. Judges have to hold people accountable, and that's everybody. Parents, CPS workers, everyone. Thank you.